Hey guys, it's Angie and Andrew with Rags, Tags, and Confections, and we're coming with you um, for this video to um, show you a new set of um, dies that we're using from Created Home with G, and I will post a picture here at the end to show you what that set of four flower nesting dies look like and post a link um, in the description box as to where you can purchase these. And I'm going to be doing some dimensional flowers and I'm going to go ahead and turn these into a Mother's Day card with you as well today. So I have um, one already finished but I'm going to start with um, four and a quarter by five and a half um, top folding card. And how I do my black cards, I put my paper away here, um, I start with a sheet of Strathmore writing paper and it is six by eight inches it's just um, thin writing paper and I cut it down to fit the inside of the card so that there's a place to actually write on here I just take the ATG go around the edges and center that up so that there's actually somewhere to put a message since it is a black base and we stamp all of our cards with the same stamp and I'm using Hero Arts Unicorn Pigment Ink it's a nice white ink that stands up well on black and dark colors so I'll stamp that that off and then sign it. Don't put our uniball away because we're going to be using it. Give that a second to dry. That gel does take a second or it will smear. Now what we're going to need today to do this is the set of four nesting dies, flower nesting dies from createdhomewithg.com and I've already punched those out and we need one of the large ones, medium, small, and the dot. I used the dot in one and one I did not. Now with those we are going to need a piece of foam. This is just a piece of packing foam that I glued two layers together with. So it's two layer thick packing foam. I could go over and get my floral board out and my ball tool and we don't need all that. Now if I'm going to do a day's worth of flowers, then yeah, I might get it out. But for this, no. We'll start small and work our way up. So you can either use the end of a jelly roll pen, something that's smooth and round. I personally don't like using this because this um, clip pinches my finger. So I use the uniball. It has a nice round end, not the cap end, but the other end. But the cap end works just as well, too. And I've done this um, in a few different videos now um, with the flowers. And I'm just going to take the end of that uniball and roll that around the middle of that flower. And break the fibers in that paper. This is the same way that I do with um, clay, with fondant. Um, basically just telling the media what you want it to do. So there's one done. Now when it gets to the bigger ones I find it easier to take from the center and push my way out to those petals. And the bigger ones like to scrooch off of here because it's such a small piece of foam. But And then I just start rolling from the center and work my way out and roll on each of those petals at the end just again to break the fibers in the paper
This really does not take that long. This is, I think, 60 pound cardstock. I think that's what this is that I'm using. Yeah, I think so. And then the larger one, again, just start from this inside and work your way out like you're going to give that flower a crease up the middle where the splits at. With the bigger ones, I do it a few times to get that start breaking those fibers to get it to cooperate a little easier. Sorry guys, I got to turn my phone off again. I think I'd remember that by now. Okay, now we're going to just roll these edges out like we did the other one. Only this time I'm going to concentrate on the ends of those petals since this is going to be our base. I'm sorry for the screeching in the background. That would be our poor spellbinder that Andrew's trying to roll some more flowers out um, for me for a couple more cards that I need to do. And I'm going to be doing them the same way as this, but with different paper. So there we get that texture and the flower as well. And we're going to bring that texture out even more. So we're done with this for the time being. Now I'm going to take any kind of ink. This is um, hybrid ink from Simon Says Stamp in Hollyhock. And just have a little dauber. And I'm going to go over these edges. I'm just going to ink the edges. Some in the middle. I want to pick up those wrinkles. I'm taking the time to put them in there. I want to pick them up and make them shine. And don't be afraid to flip your pieces over and ink those back edges too because those little touches are what can make your card or your product stand out above anybody else's. Um, it may not seem like much, but in the end product, when you're looking at a um, piece of art a card from all different angles, that little bit can make a big difference. So that's that one. The middle. Our edges. And now our little one. Okay. Now, one other step that you might want to remember. And you can also do your um, little center piece if you want, and you can curl it the same way. Just take your pen and smush it out, and it'll start to curve as well. I almost forgot our little dot. done with that one. <clears throat> now we're going to go ahead and put this together. Um, one other thing you might want to do, make sure your ink is dry before you start putting adhesive down or the adhesive just doesn't bump stick. There's just what it is. So there's those. Now I'm just going to take a small piece of foam and ah, those scissors and my yucky scissors for adhesive and you just want to make a piece small enough that it will fit in the back of your flower there just in the center part 
I'm going to pull that off. And then when you put this down, you're going to offset your petal. So instead of lining all your petals up like so, you're going to turn it. We don't want it centered, and we want to turn it slightly. Put that down, and we're going to do the same thing with our small one. Get a more narrow piece of adhesive. Put that on our back. Again, offset your petals and now we already have a flower that's taking some shape now after as soon as I find my tool here not much of a tool broken bamboo stick as all this is but it's one that I go and I will roll these petals on the large flower some out some I'll roll one by one like Next one, I may roll one half forward, one half backward. I can roll both forward. I just want to give give that flower some movement. And you can do that the whole way through with all of them. I just fuss with it to give it look like it's not one stiff piece of cardboard. Okay, now for our little piece, we have these little teeny tiny squares. These little buggers. Mm -hmm. I do not have the best of luck with, but I'm just going to put one of those down in the middle of our circle. Pop off our tape, maybe. And put that down in the middle. I'll add some shimmer to that one, and this is just an Aqua Nuvo, Nuvo Aqua Pen, Aqua Shimmer Pen. Okay, there's that one. Now, also have one here that I've put in a put a little um, gem in the middle of and it's just one of the enamel dots from Dollar Tree. So I have one with a sticker on and the other two um, have the paper centers in. So we have three of those now. And also, I've cut, Andrew's cut me out um, some leaves and berries, and this is out of a Sizzix set uh, from David Tutera, um, little framelit set. <clears throat> so for this one... I just snip those apart and I'm going to come in here with this. This is Evergreen Bow from Distress. I'm going to go over the edges of this. Before I get that any further, because I don't want to make a mess of my foam here. There's a crease, a vein in the end of this. And even if your flowers don't have this crease in, you can score a line in there to give your um, leaves and foliage some more movement. But I'm going to go ahead and fold that out and kind of follow that curve with that. And then again, I'm just going to take my pen and I'm going to roll up those edges. There we go. And then it gives it those veins and the rough edges like leaves have. There. 
And now when we take the ink over our edges, it's going to pick up that texture. And again, same thing on the opposite side. Because where that lifts off the paper, it can be seen. So I want those to stand out too. So there's that one done. The small one, I'm going to fold up on that score line. Take the pen, ball tool, whatever you have, and just follow up and down that vein line. Turn it around the other side. these edges and you don't have to do this it just gives it a little more life a little more dimension okay oh good grief and forgot my little berries For these, excuse my dirty paper towel, I just went in and just dabbed some color on there. And then took a Dilutions paint pen, which where did I put it? Okay. Yeah, this is one of these moments where if I, my head was not attached, I know I would lose it. Huh, imagine that. I actually put it back. It's just the Dilutions um, post box red paint pen. And I'm just going to hit the edges of those berries. I'm not even covering the whole thing. It's just putting a tiny bit of red paint on the end. And this is just an acrylic paint. You could do it with a marker. You could leave it alone. I just wanted to bring some more of that pink color in from the flowers to look like the pink buds. So that's all I did with that. And then took the Nuvo pen over the ends of those. And I'm just working on a paper towel to keep um, some of that mess off of the silicone. Okay, so we have that. And the other piece that's cut out is the Happy Mother's Day um, die. Andrew, do you have that handy? Happy Mother's Day die. Uh, yes, I do. Let me find it in two seconds here. I did. Okay, well, this is the we'll Happy Mother's Day die from createdhomewithg.com. And um, here we go. And I will um, post links for these, um, provided he still has them in stock, um, in the description box. So there's all of our elements. Now we're going to assemble this card. We already have our stamp on. We already have our inside done. Now it's time to make it pretty. So we have our flowers. Hmm. I was worried two wouldn't be enough, but I may actually go with two. We'll see here. Our happy Mother's Day. And I like that these are separate, that you can maneuver them around. And make it what works for you. I'm going to take my quilling bottle here. Go ahead and stick these down and build around. Okay, apparently one of our fur babies is feeling a little sassy tonight. Shit started at the bottom and worked my way up, but I don't 
And this is just a clear adhesive in here, so it'll dry and won't be seen. If you're able to just um, put these on a adhesive sheet, which I didn't even think about doing, it was kind of one of these last minute things. I could have done that and saved some fussing with the glue. Okay, I'm going to stick that T up there in between, or the H up in between the P. There's my little apostrophe. I'll lose that little booger. There's that part. Now, the I think three on there is going to be way too much. I think I'm going to cut these flowers or these leaves down. Just glue these down where they were kind of positioned at. just have to adjust the envelope size a little better be a hand delivered card which is no big deal greenery here. I'll tuck that in there. And have this one coming out down below. Okay guys, there we go. I know it took a little while and I appreciate you sitting through um, through uh, the whole process here, but there is a beautiful Mother's Day card made with some very affordable dies from Created Home with G, some four piece flower nesting die, a happy Mother's Day die, 
and a beautiful card for Mother's Day. So take care guys and thank you for watching and if you haven't done so already please remember to hit that like and subscribe button down below and we will see you later on. Take care guys. Have a great day. Bye.